Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 11th, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. It was a winter wonderland when I arrived from the snow that started yesterday afternoon and continued through the night. Had to shovel some snow off of the ramps of the platform and you can see the ground was completely covered in the morning. Pretty soon though, the sun started to come out and it continued to clear throughout the day and that sunshine melted most of the snow that was on the ground, even though temperatures didn't get much above freezing. The winds today were moderate out of the north, but they weakened a bit as the day went on, though it still felt a little bit chilly because of those colder temperatures. At the end of the day, you wouldn't even recognize that it was the same day that had started out so snowy and cloudy. With that layer of snow on the ground and sunshine, it made it a really good day for photographing raptors as that sun reflected off of the snow and lit up the underside of birds. Here we have a juvenile bald eagle. So you can see the dark head and the brown underside. We see that the trailing edge of the wing is even because all of the feathers are the same age. And we also see a lot of white in the wing pit area. And these pale inner primaries are another field mark you can use for juveniles. So again, those would be eagles born last year. Here we have a bald eagle that would have been born two years ago. We can see two ages of flight feathers in the wings. You can see these slightly longer and browner retained juvenile feathers. There's two of them right there. And here's a couple here as well. You can see it's got some wingtip damage on the outer primaries. And on these older birds, they have more white on the underside. Here we have a common raven. And look at the shape of the wing longer and pointier than you see on crows. Also the head looks larger with a large bill and the tail looks a little bit more stretched out and you can see the shorter outer tail feathers versus the longer central tail feathers. The adult male dark morph rough-legged hawk continues to be around and today we watched it for a while as it was hunting the marsh. Here we have a red-tailed hawk and we see the dark patagial bars and the belly band that all red tails show we know it's an adult because it has a dark trailing edge to the wing and a red tail. Here we have an adult female northern harrier and you can see the streaking is not only on the upper breast but also extends down to the belly and even onto the undertail coverts. There was a flock of gulls circling high overhead and I spotted this Iceland gull which I got pretty excited about but I don't think anyone else was too excited but you can see that there's no black on the wingtips just pure white wingtips. Here we have a juvenile northern harrier, so more reduced streaking, just a little bit on the upper breast, a little bit on the sides here as well, but it doesn't extend all the way down here, and relatively unmarked patagial areas. Here we have a turkey vulture, and we had about two dozen turkey vultures today, including some groups that were at relatively high altitude. Today we had the first double-crested cormorant of the season. First I saw it flying across low from east to west across the mouth of the bay, and then a few minutes later, we saw it soaring high overhead with galls. And sometimes people see a cormorant soaring and they get excited because they think that maybe it's an anhinga. But it's fairly common to see cormorants soaring on thermals. Here's another adult red-tailed hawk showing that classic shape. Again, this is a shape that you want to burn into your mind. We see those dark patagial bars and the belly band. And again... Adults have the dark trailing edge to the wing and the red tail. Here's a random snow goose that was by himself on the bay. And we seem to very rarely have any snow geese drop in on the bay compared to like Canada geese and tundra swans, which sometimes stop their migration and drop in. Um, hardly ever see flocks of snow geese drop in. And I don't know where this guy came from because he was all by himself. Here we have a juvenile red tailed hawk. So we can faintly see those patagial bars. We can see the belly band, and we know it's a juvenile because it does not have that bold trailing edge to the wings. And if we had a better look at the tail, we would see that it's more brown with barring. Here we have an adult Cooper's hawk. So first of all, let's take a look at the shape. We see long tail, kind of long wings, big head sticking out. So overall, it looks like a flying cross. So this is the shape of an excipiter. The fact that the head protrudes a large amount and the wings are held relatively straight, make this a better shape for Cooper's hawk rather than sharp-shinned hawk. On the adults, we can look at the color of the nape, which from this angle is not always uh, easy to judge, but we can see that this bird would have a dark cap, 
But then as you get to the back of the neck or the nape, it would become paler. That blue would not extend all the way onto the back like it would on an adult sharp shinned hawk. If we look at the tail, we can also see that the outer tail feathers are shorter than the central ones. So you can almost see uh, the progression of the feathers getting longer. So it just has a little bit more of a rounded look to it when it's spread out a little bit like this. And we know that this Cooper's hawk is an adult, again, because of that dark cap and also because of the orange barring on the underside. Here we have an American black duck. And with this lighting, it gives us a good chance to highlight the contrast between the dark body and the white underwing. So that can be a pretty good field mark to use to distinguish from mallards, for example, which don't show that much of a contrast. Here's a couple bald eagles goofing around in the air. Here's part of a flock of Canada geese that flew in and dropped down onto the bay. Here's another look at an adult red-tailed hawk. So again, we see those dark patagio bars and the belly band. And it's an adult, so it has this bold, dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail. If we take a look at the eBird checklist today, 46 species. And as always, I'll put a link down below. And taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptors today, we had 24 turkey vultures, one Cooper's hawk, and one red-tailed hawk for a total of 26 migrating raptors. The only new species for the season was double-crested cormorant. And taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy with a few flurries or snow showers possible. High in the mid-30s, kind of a light east-southeast wind. I think that's shifting more east as the day goes on. So not terrible conditions. It's not going to be raining and probably won't be snowing most of the days. But not a super favorable wind and not very strong. Sometimes on these days that are cloudy, that don't have much wind, there's just not much lift for the raptors. So I would expect to see some raptor activity, but maybe not a huge amount. Uh, with the lighter winds, maybe it'll be a little bit better for being able to hear songbirds and just having more songbird activity overall. So should be an all right day to be out. Won't be super cold or windy. So um, nice day to get out before the next couple of days, which aren't looking as good. If we take a look at Monday, periods of rain and snow, temps in the mid to upper 30s, winds south-southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So it's actually a favorable wind direction, and we'll keep an eye on this day, but it's not that strong of a wind. It's not really warming up a ton, and that rain may uh, prevent any sort of a raptor flight, but we'll keep an eye on Monday. That could be interesting. At least it's a little warmer with southerly winds. For Tuesday, snow with gusty winds, temperatures in the low to mid 30s, winds west-northwest at 20 to 30, and 3 to 5 inches of snow. So not looking like a very good day, just super strong winds, pretty cold. Um, might be a little bit of migration, maybe a few turkey vultures, but overall that's not looking like a good day, especially if we're getting snow. I'm keeping an eye on later in the week, especially Thursday and Friday. Those days are looking warmer with some southerly winds, so uh, they have the potential to bring some new bird migrants and maybe even decent hawk flights. Now, it looks like especially Friday, there's a possibility of rain. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that as we get closer. But they're the, the first days in a while that look like they have a bit of potential for something to be happening. Just a few signs of spring and spring migration. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.